Hey everybody, Jimmy with the Triple C Collective here on this Turtle Tuesday. Uh, today I'm going to dive into the animated series from 1987. This is my season one DVD that I own. Um, the first episode that they did was Turtle Track. Um, actually, let me give you a little bit of history. This is this was my entry into the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, was this TV show. I didn't start out with the comics that were released in 1984. Um, all of that happened, even the start of the show happened before I was even born. But like in the early 90s, like everybody else, like this stuff was on syndication already and still going even into like 94, 95 even. Like this, this show ran like uh, I think 10 total seasons between, oh, so maybe even as late as uh, 97s from 87 to 97, they were still airing like new episodes. Wow. Um, but either way, this was my entry point into the te Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then obviously I got into the movie um, in the 90s as well, into the in the early 90s as well. This, uh, going back and rewatching this TV show, um, watching the first episode, it was really great. There was a lot of really great comparisons that I can make between the first movie and this. Um, which like I'll you know start right here at the beginning of this episode, um, Turtle Tracks episode one, the first one they did. Uh, it is it starts almost like beat for beat the same way that the movie starts. It has April O'Neil doing a voiceover. It has April O'Neil talking about a crime wave. We see crime happening um, in it. In the TV show, we see. Uh, we really just see uh, Bebop and Rocksteady in their human forms before there are uh, mutated Rhino and Warthog. And uh, we see them like beating up, breaking into a car. There's a, you hear like cracks and then there's a bunch of smoke. And then the car is basically just gone and it's just a silver little frame for it. It's awesome. Um, and then it moves to like we see, you know, April O'Neil still talking and she is on like a TV screen and like, I don't know, a store, or, like, you know, a convenience store or whatever, window, whatever um, thing. And she's talking more about the crime and everything that's going on. And then eventually it leads to um, April O'Neil um, having an interview with a guy and he's talking about how all of the different equipment has just been stolen from these different places and he's naming off this stuff like it's all big like big name scientific -y stuff and the funny thing about this or why i'm even just talking about the guy is like when i was watching it for like one of my for like taking the notes for this my wife pointed out that compared to every other human that you see like in the in that animated tv series up until this point his lips are like reversed or inverted if everybody's is like you know, this, this, and then that is their mouth. His is that, and then that, and that is his mouth. And, like, once she pointed that out to me, I couldn't, like, not see it anymore. So I had to share that with everybody else. Turtle Tracks, episode one in the uh, season one of it. Check it out. It's the first person that April O'Neil's interviewing. So then she goes into one of the places that have just been robbed, and there is a guy in a lab coat there taking her around. He uh, shows her like a rope, um, and she's like, or he says, "We believe that they are coming. That these are people from Japan." April O'Neil says, "How do you know?" He shows her a rope that says Japan on it, and that's like, um, he's like, "This rope is made in Japan. See." So that's how we know they came there. Um, and the entire time that April is interviewing this guy that's in this building that's, like, showing her around about the break-in and, like, what they took and kind of doing that portion of, like, the news interview with her, um, there is a person from that break-in the night before who is still tied to a chair that is actively looking to try and, like, get out. It's all like, no, 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 and they're all tied up and, like, you know, just mumbling. Um... I don't know why they don't untie this person. I don't know if like people did that like back in like back in the eighties because they were trying to like mess with somebody there and see if like anyone caught it and nobody did. Um, because to be fair, it's like in the back, it's not like super. I, I mean, it's totally noticeable. It's 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 like there for sure. Um, but it's not like in the forefront of like the shot. So it's not like super focused on, it's like kind of off to like the right over there. And, um, and so like, it's just something I find entirely super funny. 
I love it so much. And um, then we leave there. We get a news team. Uh, we meet the news team, which is actually really funny because about a couple of months ago, NECA did the animated news team as like cat people and as regular people. Um, so seeing this, I was like, oh, that's really, that's really funny. I can't, I, that, so that, I mean, you don't see cat people in this episode of them. Um, but like, it was just funny knowing that, oh yeah, that's the news team that you could have just gotten recently. Um, and so like, then the news team is scared off and abandons April when Bebop and Rocksteady show up at Shredder's orders to go hunt her down and stop them from talking about these break-ins and all this stuff that's being taken because Shredder is a ninja and they got to live in the shadows, um, you know, make sure that they can kind of sneakily, you know, be puppet masters and stuff to everything. Um, so it's really great. We see this. There's a chase between the Shredder gang after April. The turtles show up. It's really great when we first see the turtles and they're introduced. They're in this, they're like this gray this dark gray charcoal look um, of the color. It's just a really neat color, like call out that of like an animation color that I like of them. Um, I thought it was really cool. Um, and I just like to call it out. Um, they then, after that fight, they beat up on, you know, the Shredder gang. They take April O'Neil to um, their lair. They start having pizza. Like she's knocked out for a little bit, like because she had fainted. Um, they order pizza, pizza is on its way, or they get it, um, it's really weird here, this is another one of those, like, odd comparisons to the live action movie, is that here, Michelangelo is like, I need the anchovy pizza, I want the anchovy on my pizza, and in the movie, we hear him specifically say, like, get really mad, if you put anchovy on this, um... You know, like, he gets really mad and bent out of shape saying, like, no anchovy. So it's, like, really interesting because, like, I've always thought Michelangelo hated uh, anchovy on his pizza. But, like, according to the animated TV series, maybe not. Um, and, yeah, so I just really – this has been a really fun, like um, – rewatch for me so far. Like, I've really liked it. I'm really excited to – do a bunch more of these um there i'm not going to release like a review like i said i'm going to try and like mix and match it a little bit between a short a review of either a tv show a comic or something um an unboxing whatever try and mix it up a little bit spread that spread that flavor and that love around for the turtles um but back to the episode so then while they're also there sharing pizza april um gets the history of the turtles um from splinter um and how they got turned into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and he got turned into a mutant rat. Um, they also, like, uh, they say that the mutant gen that got on them uh, changed, changed the person to what they had last been around. So the turtles were just close to a human, so they got turned into humanoid turtles. Splint, uh, Splinter was closest to the rats that he watched around, or like that he was around. So he got turned into a rat. Um, in that, as opposed to like the '90s movies when he's just a rat and he watches his, like he's the pet rat of his master. Um, and then they, you know, like he just mimics his move from the cage and stuff. And we have the little puppets and like from the movie. Oh, it's great! I love that stuff so much. Um, so we get that and then april's like great you guys are the bad guys because you're telling me you guys are ninjas and ninjas were the ones who did the break-in and they're like whoa we just saved your life what about um i mean we're turtles did they say anything about turtles and she's like i don't know it doesn't matter but like whether you guys broke in or not you guys being ninjas and being around like as a story so i need to tell it and then they Donatello gets in her way and is like, no, 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 like, we, we, we just helped you out. Like, we don't want our names out there. And they work on a plan to figure it out. They decide that April and Neil will be able to help them as much as they will be able to help April and Neil. They leave the lair. And then um, one of the most random and crazy parts of the episode is once they get out of the uh, sewer and they come up, there's a nice little old lady with, like, I don't know, classic blanket pushing like a cart or something like around. She sees them. She pulls out like an auto, a big <laughs> automatic gun 
and it like starts threatening the turtles and like taking shots at them it's it it was wild it's like oh that's really nice like this sweet old granny is gonna like you know see like the turtles like helping april or like being or like will be able to be like oh yeah i saw you know like foot clan members over there and people who looked weird you know kind of like you guys or something like over there like just funny is it halloween or whatever is there a show going on whatever but no she pulls out a gun and like defends herself which is equally awesome and like badass and still pretty surprising something that i was not expecting um because i don't really remember like that from like watching it back then but then after that then that's is where we get the turtles in disguise i only say turtles in disguise here is because again NECA. now they have um as you guys have seen my i'm sure other unboxings that i've done for the teenage mutant ninja turtles and other NECA toys um i will be doing other unboxings for other toy brands as well um to some degree uh and so for NECA, they also did a release of all four of these turtles and trench coats and like hats which again you know if you're not familiar with this but you're familiar with like Raphael in disguise NECA also did that based off the 1990s movie um so like they, it's really great again seeing some more of these parallels that i that i've uh between the tv series and then like uh the first movie um so all of this is been um so great and, <laughs> and we they go back <laughs> i'm just looking at the turtle in the skies thinking about that um so as they're in the skies as they go back to where they first encountered the um sorry before they got into the disguises they went back to where they first um, encountered Bebop and Rocksteady and saved April to see if they left any clues. They found a matchbook that said Ninja Pizza. Then once they get out of the sewer, that's when they meet the um, old lady. She pulls the gun. They go and then get the Turtles in Disguise costumes, which are now like available as a four-pack. You can find those um, somewhere. Um, you might even still be able to find them in stores in like Target and Walmart. Uh, but they move... On from uh, the turtles in uh, disguise, and they get to the place where the pizza, the ninja pizza is. And this thing is really funny because everything here is all like ninja base. It's like ninja pizza, ninja laundry, ninja uh, video rental, which, like, I don't know now. I don't know if people know what a video rental is. Like, we like we excuse me we truly might be at a point where people don't know like what it meant to physically rent a vhs a dvd from a blockbuster a hollywood video or whatever family owned uh video rental chain that you had like or family video themselves whatever um it's all very um i don't know i miss that stuff that that, that was always a good time going to pick out what you were going to watch um so that was really great. Like, like, there's a lot of nostalgia on this, and I get that. Like, some people are like, "Ooh, be careful! Nostalgia can kill you," um, because you're just hoping for something that like really is unattainable because it happened once before, and trying to recreate it may not always be good. Um, or like, as I've said, like, "Huh, I don't really remember that," but it hasn't changed. It hasn't made me like the things that I don't remember or that I'm like that I've like said i'm like shocked about or whatever doesn't make me like this any less and doesn't make me want to do this any less like talk about it watch them talk about it and have other people talk about it with me or whatever um it makes me want to do it even more because like over time like everyone changes and your tastes change and stuff so like i get where something that you might like it once before like may not stand up now like it happens um but this is not that case for me and so they uh they go to the, the pizza parlor they order a pizza there um like at the pizza chain or at the ninja pizza where the matchbook came from they get like a whipped cream pizza and like a banana something pizza or whatever um but while they're there april o'neill leaves the pizza parlor while the four turtles are waiting for their pizza slash eating their pizza 
April O'Neil sees this Manhattan security service, goes in there and sees weird Foot Clan members. And she hears a secretary say, uh, you know, service team C, I have another company that needs your services that can be completely wiped out. And it's like, huh, that's a little nefarious. So that sounds a little, uh, a little shady, if you will. And, um, it was just so good. I, and then it, like April O'Neil gets caught. She gets kidnapped by the Foot Clan members. The turtles then go after her. They find like little clues that are left by April, um, like things that have fallen out of her purse. Then they see her purse like hanging from like, uh, I don't know, a building like a skyscraper, not a skyscraper, like an apartment building or something like that. Um, they go up there, the Foot Clan members are there, and the one biggest twist that I totally, absolutely forgot is that they're robots. The Foot Clan members that are in the gray and the purple in the anime, they're robots. They're clankers. They're not um, human. And that was something that I was just like, oh my god, I forgot about that. And that was like a happy surprise. And I kind of feel silly that I forgot about it. Um, but that was just one of those things that I was like, ha, huh, I'm in for a ride now because like, if I forgot about that, I really wonder what else I've forgotten about. Um, so it made me really excited to like, uh, jump in and like start getting ready to watch, uh, the rest of it. But in this fight is actually what we got. Um, one of my best or one of my favorite things is like once Michelangelo finds out that the Foot Clan members are robots he, he ditches his trench coat like his beige trench coat and they get a really great shot of him like kind of turned to the side like spinning both of his nunchucks and it's like one of my favorite shots ever um and it's like somewhere within the last like five minutes of the episode i mean these episodes are like 22 23 minutes they're not super long or anything um they're really great and uh so like it's it's honestly like one of my favorite things um, seeing that they beat the rest of the Foot Clan members, or some of them escape with April O'Neil. They go down this like hatch in the roof. And while they're in this um, hatch in the roof into this other room, this other monitoring room, it's weird. They clearly are video cameras and stuff, but like the turtles have uh a wall of monitors that they're able to see the shredder on through like security cameras in shredders room and shredder is a has an entire like you know curvature of monitors like in front of him with security cam with like camera feeds into where the turtles are this confused me for a second um why does that other room have a feed to where shredder is Unless, I mean, I guess it's so that, like, Shredder can still give directions maybe to people that are there. Like, because clearly you can do things, like, from the roof or, like, get into the roof or out from there and then go throughout the rest of the building. So maybe that's really what it is. But I, I didn't really know why they why the turtles in their room going from the roof down into this, like, landing room area, why they would have had a video feed to the Shredder. Um, it didn't really make sense, but I guess it could be to take orders so that like he can do that. But I don't know. Wouldn't he be able to just talk through like a PA system? They're robots. Couldn't he just like type in a command to them as well? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. It just made me, just made me ask a question, um, about it. Made me think about it a little bit. And, um, then, we get the first talk about the techno drone and this is another really this is another really funny part of it is that like he's like i gotta uh shredder's like i gotta stop the turtles from finding the techno drone then he will, says over the pa that the turtles can hear all foot clan members get to the techno drone and literally the first thing out of like the ne the next line spoken is from one of the turtles it's donatello and he's like huh, I wonder what a techno drone is. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, Shredder, weren't you trying to keep all these people away from it? Why are you, you know they're in the building. Why are you making this announcement over the PA to announce it to the whole world and like the turtles themselves and everything like that? Why are you doing that, man? Why are you doing that? Um, but eventually they, uh, 
The whole building gets filled with water as they're all trying to escape. April almost drowns. They actually do a really cool, like, animated-looking shot of the building. It's a glass building. So, like, you can see it from the outside, the water filling up, going up as, like, it, they do, like, you know, an outside wide shot of it as opposed to, like, being inside intimate with the turtles. But it was really cool just seeing the water rise in this building and stuff. Like, it, it, still, I'm like, oh, man, that was such a great little animated shot that they put in there um loved it loved it it was so good uh so the floors drowned and then that whole building like kind of like explodes from like water pressure from the inside out um they the turtles are able to get out of there because they make it to the roof they swing off from um leonardo's uh samurai katana sword that he stuck into the roof and they all slid down there to get there originally um and they bring back a foot clan member like uniform to splinter and splinter explains like this is the work of uh the foot clan i know them we will have to figure them out and they were like nobody got out of the building you know when the building exploded uh, like blew up exploded from all the water pressure and splinter's like no shredder would be able to he is very much so alive unless you saw his body like go limp in the last breath of air like he based splinter insinuates like if you haven't seen this dude truly die in front of you he is definitely 100 percent alive and um that's really how the episode um ends except for uh, I, I mean, there's nothing like big action that happens. April O'Neil just asks for the pizza with bananas and sausage on it, um, which was a really weird combination of pizza. But I mean, they had ice cream and anchovy ice, ice cream and like pepperoni and stuff like they had all kinds of crazy, wacky uh, pizza pla uh, flavors or types or whatever. But um, I love this show. And I have only ever known it to be available on, like, uh, DVD. I know they haven't re – I don't believe, at least, they haven't released a complete uh, Blu-ray set. I know there's individual DVDs or there is a complete uh, uh, DVD set as well that comes, like, with the Turtle Van as a little, like, collectible, like, holding case. Um, I ha And so I love this. Um, I know you can also get these seasons off of Amazon Prime. I believe you can buy them for like eight or nine dollars an episode there if like streaming's your thing and that's the way you want them. You can definitely find the DVDs or whatever wherever they sell that stuff still. You could probably even find them used at some places if brick and mortar stores are still really around doing that stuff if they've survived the pandemic. Um but I love this. This was such a great rewatch. It, gave, it it brought me so much joy. And I hope you guys go out there and, you know, check it out as well. Or I uh, hope anything that I've done um, turtle-wise brings you, like, a little bit of joy or, like, makes you a fan of the turtles. Because I love this stuff. It is so much fun. And I have really enjoyed um, going back. And I'm really excited to continue to watch this and continue to, like, give my opinions on this stuff. So I really appreciate you guys for joining me today for this turtle Tuesday of a commentary track review, um, on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the animated series from 1987. Thank you for joining me today. Cowabunga.